All right, it is a beautiful day outside and uh, here I am stuck inside again. So, all that aside, I'm gonna do two videos this week. Uh, there are just on topics uh, seven and eight. They're not all that complex. And as a treat, uh, we are not gonna do a final exam for this unit. Uh, I will put the final exam on there. So if you wanna go through and just check out how you're doing, I'll put the final exam with an answer key on the website or on the website on Google Classroom for you. So you can just take a look at it and just do a self-assessment and figure out things you might know and things you might not know as well as you think you should. So that is kind of up to you as to how you're going to approach it. Um, so topic seven, this, if I'm gonna sum it up really simply, uh, there has been a evolution, like from the beginning of cars to modern cars, from the beginning of a chair to a modern chair. Uh, everything has kind of gone through a natural progression of, you know, the original, um, I don't know, the original functional, very whatever functional use thing that we made to a more modern version of whatever that is and something that probably is, you know, more ergonomically, uh, which means just more comfortable basically. Uh, more more form fitting to your body so that your body isn't kind of contorted. Um, and so that's just the natural progression of everything um, from bikes to cars to chairs to uh, desks to everything. Um, there has been a natural progression throughout history. Uh, so when we're talking about simple machines, uh, like this guy here is what they used to use back in the day, a steam engine. Uh, they would boil, they'd have a big container here that would have water and they would boil it by shoveling coal in there to boil the water and that's what the steam was coming out. And I have a really awesome website that I'm going to put up for you guys. You can go take a look at different engines, but um, older engines like a steam engine, uh, you can go in and look and see how these work. Um, there's a whole bunch of different types of engines on here on this animated engines website and it is a ton of fun but like this is the steam locomotive engine that we were talking about. You can speed them up or slow them down um, as they're kind of rolling and so this is the wheel that is being pushed and is being pushed by the releasing of this red steam in, in through this port and as it pushes in it oscillates back and forth. There's a little, if you look right here there is a small intake port right here that moves back and forth and selects uh, cold air out, goes this way, and then it opens up a port on this side. And then when it moves back, uh, it actually zooms. I'm going to zoom it in a little bit so you can see it working a little bit better. So as this piece right here is moving back and forth, it allows the cold air to escape. When it allows the cold air to escape, it actually allows the hot steam to come in and push it back. And then when it's pushed this, this rod all the way to the backside, uh, it actually changes this uh, camshaft is kind of what it is. Uh, so that type of an engine is, you know, the origins of lots of the engines. And you can actually go online, you can buy one of these little steam engines and put a little candle underneath a container that has water and it'll actually still chug away and puff little, puffs the steams up, steam out. Uh, and you can speed it up again so you can kind of see it going a bit faster as it oscillates back and forth this little covering right here going back and forth allowing steam the steam that is in this compartment to go and the colder less uh, more dense i guess uh, cooler steam to escape as the more as the hotter steam comes in and pushes it so that is a the origins of an engine like a steam engine um, is by boiling water and you can go online. Uh, I'll put a link in for uh, Jay Leno driving a steam powered car. And it's just kind of cool. The origins of how we did stuff to you know make work happen. Uh, as you remember in the Aztec Spanish unit, there were no beasts of burden and there was no wheel when they were making their uh, pyramids. Uh, I guess their temples, the Templo Mayor. Uh, and there is a progression there as well. When you introduce beasts of burden, cows or ox or something like that, you can change the way that we do stuff. Um, so the, the method of doing something kind of follows what is available to you. 
and what technology or what manpower or what animal power you have, you can do different kinds of work. Um, so I already showed you that steam engine. I'm not that worried about you reading through this. It's not the end of the world. The very first engine uh, was actually just like a flying duck almost and they put it over top of a fire and it's, as the steam escaped, it moved the thing around. Uh, you can still find steam engines around that are still operating. Um, again, I'll put that video up for you uh, from Jay Leno. Here's another image of that same piston, that valve rod to go back and forth as it allows steam to enter and escape depending on which side is working, as it, which side the steam is coming in. So the steam's coming in here and going down and then we push the piston back this way. And as it pushes the piston back this way, it'll push the cooler uh, exhaust out and then it'll do the exact same thing. When it pushes it all the way that way, the valve rod swings this way and then the hot steam comes in this side and pushes the piston back this way. And as the piston is pushed back this way, this comes over and this valve rod is now covering over this side, forcing the cooler steam, the exhaust steam, to come out the, uh, the same exhaust port. So there's just some interesting things going on with how those work. Um, jet engines, oh, here's that first engine, uh, first steam engine that someone ever made. Uh, as steam escaped, it basically pushed the wheel around and around and around, uh, and it created motion, which was a new thing. Um, so modern steam engines uh, push blades like this. Uh, we use this to generate electricity uh, today in our modern world. Um, and there's wonderful things like the turbines. Uh, if I go back to here, you can go in and there's a jet propulsion engine uh, that you can see how the firing of the jet actually pushes past those fan blades. So they create, they're pulling air in and that's spinning the shaft and then the fire is pushing it out, but it's also spinning these smaller shafts on the backside as it goes, as it escapes. Uh, and there is uh, turbo props. So this is the same process, just spinning the prop on the front of the plane. This is like a Cessna or something like that that still has a fan blade on the front of it. Uh, and then there's other jet engines like this turbo fan, which is the one that you would see on like a 747. So the Simple Machines has a whole bunch of different uh, types of motors that you can look at, which is kind of great. Um, so we today we don't use many steam engines, but we use what's called an internal combustion engine, uh, which is really important because if we had an external combustion engine, your car would just be on fire and that's not a good thing. Uh, so an internal combustion engine uh, basically means that, they're, that that's the one that has the pistons that are moving up and down. And again, a common, uh, regular old every day, this is what your car is running, is this four stroke engine. Um, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit and I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit for it. So there is an intake side and that intake side is pushing gas and air in. And then once it compresses it up, there's a spark plug up top here that explodes it. And that explosion pushes the gas down. Once it's exploded, this, this port here opens and it opens up and put, lets the exhaust gas escape. That's what this gray stuff is coming out right now. Uh, and that is all operated by this guy right here. And so this is a camshaft. And this camshaft is pushing these lobes up and down, uh, or the lobe is pushing this rod up and down. Um, so those intake and uh, those intake rods and uh, and exhaust rods, those are valves, and those are allowing for the flow of gases or things like that in or out. Um, and this happens, you know, when they talk about when you when you're looking at your parents, they're talking about RPMs. If you ever hear them talk about that. Um, they're talking about how many times this is rotating per minute, which kind of equates, like if you have a V6, there's gonna be multiple of these, there's gonna be six cylinders in your vehicle having this happen to spin this shaft, which in turn spins this shaft to actuate the, um, the valves opening and closing and the uh, sparks coming into the, to ignite the fuel and all those kinds of things. And so this camshaft and everything that runs off it is very important. And this one right here is where the actual power for your car is coming from. 
Um, so again, that ignition system making a spark happen is going on alongside that. And there's other versions of this. If you have a dirt bike, you may have a two stroke motor, which only has, uh, which has less uh, intake and outtake ports. It's just kind of allowing it to come in and out. Uh, you may have, your parents may drive a diesel. A diesel doesn't have a spark plug in it. It just has, uh, it has diesel which comes in and the diesel actually, uh, by compression actually explodes and creates a power. Uh, this right here is called a glow plug. And this one has multiple camshafts that are operating both a intake port and an exhaust port. Uh, so that is a diesel motor operating. And again, there's instructions here about how everything is working on this website. Um, I doubt if your parents would have one of these, but this is called a Wankel rotary engine which basically has a three lobe rotor that's spinning around it. And there is a intake port, which basically every time, I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. Every time this rotor comes and meets this side, it seals off across here and it pushes the exhaust out and then it pulls in uh, by vacuum pressure uh, gas. And that gas is come to, comes down here and compresses into this small port and then it explodes and it creates the exhaust and the force to actually spin this. And so a, rotor, a Wankel rotary engine has multiple of these rotors actually operating at all times. Uh, and again, that is what creates the power to drive the vehicle if your parents have a Wankel rotary engine. Uh, and so there's all sorts of different things you, if you are enjoying, if you enjoy engines, like this gnome rotary one is really cool. Um, what other ones are fun? Um, the grasshopper beam one is kind of cool. So some of these steam ones are very interesting. Um, the Sterling one is, is straight up interesting. Again, this is a steam one, but there's going to be heat applied to a, uh, to this part here. And as it comes up here, it enters and pushes down. And because there's these vents on the side, this actually allows for cooling of the exhaust in this whole cylinder and it pushes it back down. Um, and when it pushes it back down, it uh, puts the water back in to get heated back up. And so it's kind of a, um, the idea is that it would be a um, sealed engine that would provide some amount of force. I'm not saying you're gonna drive your car on this, but it would be providing some form of force to spin the shaft. And again, like it says up here, it's the idea is uh, it could be a, an alternative fuel motor that could power uh, from solar power, geothermal, a place like Iceland could use this using geothermal power to power uh, plants or other things to create electricity. So there's all sorts of cool things that go along with these other motors. Anyways, back to in internal combustion engines. Um, so this crankshaft right here, uh, there is a bunch of different strokes on these four stroke engines. But the whole point is there is an exhaust port, an intake port, uh, compression, and a the actual like power stroke, which is a name that's used now by Ford for their diesel engines. But it is the pushing down as the gases, compressed gases and air mixture is exploded, is combusted. It actually pushes the piston down inside of the uh, engine and makes the power. Uh, other engines, like a rocket engine is here. Uh, this one takes the two fuel sources, oxygen and hydrogen, and combines them together with a spark to create a tremendous amount of force. Uh, if you look here, this can reach 10,000 kilometers per hour, which is kind of bonkers. Um, so lots of different kinds of engines, but there is a history of them, and there's a history of everything. Today, we have a pump that is operating at the... Uh, water, at the, not the water treatment plant, but at a pump, pump house as it pulls it out of the river and we clean it, but it actually comes from an, the original stuff, like the water screw here, that this Archimedes screw that was the original uh, thing that drew water out of a river and put it into a tub, uh, to a well that they would drill, uh, to a pump. There's a great video that I'll put on about a Canadian contribution to water in Africa, uh, which comes from a really rudimentary pump. So there's lots of different things that as time progresses, we do things just in different ways. Uh, we make things happen and work in different ways as time progresses. So 
long story short, there is a natural progression of how uh, moving things and things that make work happen co like come to be. We don't have a crane like it is today without a block and tackle from yesteryear. So that is what I'm trying to get across. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Have a good one.